Here we have a Wi-Fi enabled smart bulb. But this is no ordinary Wi-Fi enabled smart bulb. This one is a bit special. This one has been heavily modified. And the logic behind this is um, anybody who's ever owned one of these bulbs will tell you that the moment somebody goes and turns the light switch on the wall off, it loses all its smart capability because it's no longer under Wi-Fi control. And it's very much a dead bulb, no longer smart. So I aim to change this by doing some modifications to this bulb and I'll share them with you in this video. So here we have a little test setup of a smartphone that can control the smart bulb over Wi-Fi and a light switch wired to the uh, smart bulb. So ordinarily um, you have uh, Wi-Fi control so you can turn the bulb on and off via Wi-Fi. But look what happens when I turn the bulb off with the light switch. In theory the power to the smart bulb has been cut so its Wi-Fi control has been disabled. So you shouldn't be able to control it via the um, smart app at all. But you can. Because my modification. So the reason for this is I've done something special to the bulb inside and we have a diode that lets the half wave pass through to the smart bulb and this gives it power to operate even in the off position. Now in order for your smart bulb not to be disabled by the light switch in the off position and its power has been removed, um, we need to find a way to power the smart bulb even when the light switch is in the off position. And there's a way to do this. I have previously done this with my um, Shelly One hack and you should really watch the video about this. Um, what this does is it allows you to put your Shelly One right by the light fixture itself even if you've got no neutral uh, behind the light switch. Um, but that also means that I could possibly take the guts out of my Shelly One and my little opto hack circuit and put it straight into the light bulb itself. So uh, let's have a look to see if we can do that. So with the diode connected across the light switch, our light bulb will either be powered by half wave DC or full wave AC, depending on the position of that light switch bridging out the diode. Um, now all we need now is a, a little circuit locally by the light bulb that detects the difference between half wave DC and full wave AC and this is our trigger to trigger the smart bulb to come on and off. So let's open up the smart bulb and look at the internals to see how we could hack this and um, how we can interface with the, the components inside. The first thing that we see is the LED driver board. Um, with its uh, driver chip and this operates basically directly from rectified mains voltage it's completely self-contained just below the LED driver board there's another board that plugs into it and it's essentially just a power supply that takes the mains voltage and um, supplies a 3.3 volt uh, to a um, Wi-Fi module and this Wi-Fi module uh, just uh, generates PWM dimming signals to, to, for the dimming function of the main LED driver board. My initial thought was that I could um, write some firmware for the Wi-Fi module to accept the input from my opto isolator uh, trigger circuit. Uh, but since I'm absolutely rubbish with writing software, I thought that the Shelly one was essentially the same thing as the power supply board. It was a 3.3-volt um, power supply and a um, ESP8266 Wi-Fi module all in one. Um, the only extra thing it had was a relay driver. Now, even though the Shelly One is an incredibly small device, it's still much too big to fit inside the casing of the smart bulb. Now, since we didn't need the relay um, because we could use the logic from the Shelly One to drive the PWM signal for the um, LED driver board directly. We could um, unsolder the relay and get rid of that. We could also remove the terminal screws and we could remove all the header pins and see if we could trim the board down so the whole board is small enough to fit inside the bulb directly. Using a Dremel tool, I carefully removed all the parts of the PCB that weren't necessary um, this included removing uh, 
the terminal screws and some of the header pins and also um, some of the components that I could relocate somewhere else. For example, the fusible resistor and the metal oxide resistor, they could be used to protect the entire lamp and not just the Shelly one from the incoming supply. Now the end result wasn't pretty, but then again it doesn't have to be, it just has to fit inside the lamp casing. I'll put a big piece of heat shrink sleeving over the whole lot and shrink it down for insulation and protection. Since I didn't have any screw terminals, I had to attach wires to various points on certain tracks and also create the odd wire link. Now let's get back to the LED driver board. It has two um, PWM dimming channels for the warm white and the cold white LEDs. Now since we only have one IO pin on our Shelly 1 that we're going to use to just turn this panel on and off. Instead of using PWM, it's just going to be a full on or full off signal. So we'll bridge these two input pins together and uh, then we'll just connect our one channel from the IO to that. And uh, that'll just turn the lamp on and off. I suppose in the firmware, we could uh, rewrite the software inside the Shelly 1 to have some dimming function in the future. But for now, the Shelly 1 is just going to operate as a on off switch for the entire bulb. Now the next step was to create the little optocoupler circuit that detects the difference between half wave and full wave that uh, tells the Shelly one whether or not to turn on and off uh, so we can have uh, the light switch signal locally by the bulb. Now since we removed the relay from the Shelly one's board uh, there was a little space on the board that uh, we can hopefully build a very compact version of this optocoupler circuit. So. Um, it can all fit nice and snug inside the bulb. I added a diode and a 10 microfarad capacitor. This was needed to smooth out all the ripples since it made the LED panel extremely flickery um, and it didn't really like the half wave DC very much. This would all fit nice and snug inside the lamp base. I also put the uh, fusible resistor that I removed from the Shelly 1 there so the whole lamp is now protected by that fusible resistor. It will also help for the inrush uh, limiting for that uh, big 10 microfarad capacitor. So I used some heat shrink tubing, uh, heat shrink sleeving to um, insulate all the components inside. Uh, so I shrunk some over the um, capacitor and diode that, that sits in the bottom of the lamp base and also over the Shelly one um, itself. Uh, but the heat shrink tubing sort of left the opening at the bottom at the top of um, of the two components so I put a bit of tape just to cap that off it probably wasn't necessary but it's you know it's just belts and braces really just to insulate everything properly um, there's another problem that I encountered as well um, since the uh, whole lamp the the plastic base part of the lamp is actually aluminium on the inside and the um, LED panel is aluminium as well and this effectively forms a Faraday cage which means that the um, Shelly one's onboard antenna won't work very well the signal will be severely attenuated and um, its range would be drastically reduced and probably not be usable at all so what I ended up doing was um, soldering onto the board uh, a little bit of wire and uh, poking it through the LED panel so that uh, it sticks into the dome bit of the LED bulb uh, about an inch and um, I'm no expert on um, antenna theory but it seemed to work fairly well and the range wasn't uh, any worse or any better than the original unit. So the capacitor and diode will have to fit into the lamp base and I think there's just enough room for it to fit comfortably in there. I've attached the live and neutral uh, wires and they've been tinned with some solder and the, the neutral is trapped by the screw um, metal screw case and um, the live pokes out through a little hole and there is a, a little metal pin that just pushes in and traps that wire this is how a lot of these LED lamps are constructed but it makes it relatively easy to dismantle and it makes it quite hackable as well I trimmed the antenna down to about an inch um, 
I don't know if this is optimal, but it seemed to work fine, so I'm sticking with that. So now it's just time to add a bit of super glue adhesive just to firmly attach everything together. Um, and um, that will also help to keep the dome in place. And then I'll add a bit of um, a heat sink compound so that the heat from the LED panel is uh, nicely synced away to the uh, casing. Now it's a good idea to glue the dome since um, the LED panel in front is effectively live at mains voltage. So let's pop the dome back on and that's it. Job done. Let's give it a test. So here we have our um, modified smart bulb all completed and put back together. Uh, so now we can just screw it into the lamp socket base. And as you can see it's lit. So uh, the switch uh, is in the on position. And um, what we have on the switch is our diode. And um, it's just straight across the switch contacts. And it's in a bit of uh, sleeving to protect you from any nasty surprises when you touch it. And um, now, in theory, I could turn it off with the light switch. And if we get our Shelly One app, the Shelly Cloud app uh, ready, and we allow it to connect to the bulb, now we should have uh, smart bulb control from the Shelly Cloud app directly. And we can turn it off with the switch as well. And we should still retain our um, Wi-Fi control. And as you can see, Wi-Fi control still works even though the switch is in the off position. Technically, there is no on-off position. It's just a, the switch is just acting like a trigger. So it's just in half wave or full wave mode. And either one of those modes can trigger the switch to... Um, to have the light come on and off. But uh, ideally in the future, I don't think I want to put uh, a Shelly one directly into, into the bulb. Um, it was just uh, my easy option now. But uh, I think um, what we could do is, uh, we could put our little opto coupler circuit straight into the bulb and have it trigger the little Wi-Fi module that is already inside the bulb. We just need to rewrite some of the firmware so it accepts a switch input. Um, unfortunately, I am quite rubbish with writing firmware, and I know there's a whole community that do the ESP8266 or ESP8285 um, uh, chipsets, and people like to uh, write new firmware for them. And maybe somebody can help me with that in the future, and we can do a much simpler version of this bulb, rather than this big elaborate... Um, uh, hack that I did. But uh, anyway, if you like this video, uh, please leave a message in the comments uh, if you think this was completely over the top or if it was interesting or if you'd like to see more. I have some other ideas um, and uh, I've actually made another small bulb um, using a completely different uh, uh, technique where I used, I simply replaced the Wi Fi module uh, with the one from my smart socket and I think that probably is going to be another video. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you on the next one.